Here's the question, and it's a great question. Why haven't other churches changed back to Saturday? I'm talking about Sabbath issues, right? And uh, I don't know if that if the person was, was here, you know, a couple weeks ago when uh, Pastor Bentley did a presentation on Sabbath. I suspect they were, because that's a, that's a question that kind of comes from a, a perspective of, yeah, I've heard, I heard what you said, I paid attention, I took notes, I filled out my, my little sheet, you know, the handout. But why is this such a, like a rare thing, right? Is that a good question? Is that a fair question? Here's the problem. I'm not sure I can give you a great answer, and here's why. There's about 2 billion Christians on the planet. Of those about 2 billion, roughly half are Catholic and half are Protestant. Of those roughly a billion Protestants, there's somewhere in the neighborhood of 25 million Seventh-day Adventists. These are rough numbers. It's off my dome. But those are accurate until you prove me wrong. Okay? We're just going to go with them. So I can tell you why 25 million Christians do what we're doing right now. I can tell you that. For the other, what's that work out to? One, 975 million Protestants plus about a billion Catholics. There's lots of reasons. There's lots of reasons. So I want to talk about just a, a couple of the common ones. And, and here's the other problem, guys. Like This is not a thing where I can go to turn in your blue pew Bibles to page number whatever, and I'll give you the text that explains exactly why this is. Because you're asking me about something that's going on today that's been going on. So I scribbled some notes down, and I have them here. Because unlike old pocket square, I'm not as good off the dome. And I slept for about 1.75 hours last night. So, yeah, it's a lovely thing. I think that, certainly in my experience, there's a, there's a couple... That's great. A couple categories. Oh, man. A couple categories. First is, honestly, this is something we don't think about a lot, right? If you grew up, starting from the time you were that tall, your parents took you to church on Sunday, well, it's the day you go to church. Right? I was 17 years old when I asked, you know, I, when I was little, little, as if I was ever little, little, but, you know, when I was very young, we went to a Presbyterian church because my dad is Scottish, and that's what you do. If you don't go to a Presbyterian church, you're a heretic if you're Scottish. Well, when I was about six, something happened at that church that we don't need to discuss, but my mother decided it was no longer a place fit for her children, and so we started going to a Baptist church. And I was... 17, when the girl I was dating introduced me to this notion, I mean, I was 16, I don't know, whatever, it's it a long time ago, either way, introduced me to this notion that I've been doing it wrong my whole life. I mean, it's insofar as I was ever doing it at all. Um, but I was doing it wrong, and it proved it to me out of the Bible. And when I read it for myself in the Bible, and I read it in like six different translations, because... I don't have the Greek and Hebrew like old pocket square does or like Evan does. So I can't go to the original. I mean, I guess I could, but I wouldn't know what I was reading. It wouldn't do me any good. So what I like to do is I'll, I'll use this version. Have her, you give me a Bible in English, I'm going to look at it, and I'm going to compare it. I'm going to see how the different words are, are translated. And the thing that became very clear to me is it was suddenly obvious, like the nose on my face, that I had been doing it wrong. That the Sabbath had never changed. But it only became obvious once somebody pointed it out to me and I studied it for myself. So I, real quick, years ago, I, I was working for a company and we bought a product and uh, <clears throat> it was a, a, a software product. And, you know, software development is a, is a funny thing. It's never done, right? You're always, there's always another release because there's always something they need to fix or whatever. This was, I'm just going to say it, not ready for prime time. 
We didn't have one user interface for this thing. We had four user interfaces for this thing because the main user interface couldn't do all the things that, it, it was a mess. But I was the guy in charge of rolling it out to my crew. It was an infrastructure thing, it was no big deal. It's not like regular people had to use it. And my buddy Bob, one day, we we're having breakfast, and he starts just dog cussing me because I'm making him learn this terrible software. And I said, Bob, really? It's very intuitive once you get used to it. Now, first of all, it's a lie. Actually, it's an oxymoron. There's no such thing as intuitive once you get used to it, right? Because intuitive means you don't have to get used to it. But I said, Bob, it's, it's great. Once you get used to it, you'll find it's very intuitive. And he picked up a plate of hash browns and threw it at me. <laughs> but six months later, I didn't have Bob in the next cubicle over swearing about this software anymore because he knew how to do it. He got used to it. So I think part of why the vast majority of Christians go to church on Sunday is they don't know any different. Nobody's told them. It's what they're used to. There's another thing. I told you, my, uh, my, I say my dad was Scottish. It means I'm Scottish. It's how that works. But my dad was actually the first in his family to be born in the United States. My grandfather was born in Scotland and all the way back to back when they were like just wearing nothing but paint running around naked. All right, that's what we do. But after my dad died, I was going through some of his stuff, right? Like, like you have to do after, you, after your parents die. And I found this cool letter that my great-grandfather, Thomas Stenhouse, for whom my oldest brother is named, wrote to my grandfather, David Stenhouse, for whom I am named. And what the deal was is this. So I I told you, my, my grandfather was born in Scotland. His dad was born in Scotland, all the way back. Well, they came to America, and, and like you do back in the 1800s, you don't come to America to be poor. You come to America to, to make it big, right? That's, what, that's, that's why you do it. You get some freedom, you get some success, and then when you're old and successful, you go back to show off. At least that's what you do in my family. So my great-grandfather got on a boat, went back to Scotland, rented the biggest car you could find in Scotland, and drove around seeing the family going, suckers! But there's an interesting thing in this letter that he wrote to my grandfather. He said, last Sabbath, last Sabbath, me and your aunt and uncle and your crazy grandma, whoever it was, got in the car, went for a drive through Edinburgh, up into the hills, da 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 What day of the week do you suppose that was when my great-grandfather got into a car with his family and went tooting off in the countryside in Scotland? Sunday. It was Sunday. Now, we studied here that the Sabbath is what day? My great-grandfather, who I never met him, by all accounts, very smart dude, I have no idea how the gene pool got so watered down by the time it got to me. But sincerely believed that what he was doing was the biblical thing to do. He kept the Sabbath. My dad used to tell me when he was a little kid, on Sunday, they would get up in the morning, they would go to church, they would come home, they would sit down and not move until the sun went down. Sit in your chair. If you want to read something, you're going to read a, a book of religious, religious teaching. You ain't going to read no comic books. You ain't going to go outside and play. You're going to sit your butt down in that chair and, and read something. You know, read something that John Knox wrote or something like that, right? That's what you do. Why? Well, they got a crazy idea of Sabbath keeping, but they had a crazy day for Sabbath keeping too. So I do believe that there are some people who understand the value of Sabbath, who understand the value of a day of rest, who desire to follow the Lord as far as the light that they've been shown, and for one reason or another, and there are a couple of reasons, do it on Sunday. My mother, I told you, was Baptist. And when I became a Seventh-day Adventist at the age of 18, she was not happy. Um, and we talked about the Sabbath thing, and she said, but Christians go to church on Sunday. Why? Because the resurrection, right? I'm like, Look, the resurrection is awesome. It's actually really important. Apostle Paul said, if there's no, resurre no resurrection, then your faith is what? It's vain. It's worth nothing, right? 
But what nobody in the Bible ever said was, so let's do that resurrection thing every week by going to church on Sunday. They don't say that. We honor the resurrection how? We saw it last week with Kim. The baptism. We represent the death, burial, and resurrection. Historically, and there's myriad documentation to demonstrate this, historically, the reason why people go to church on Sunday is because some dude, a long time ago, said, this is what you're going to do. Everything after that, quite frankly, is excuses and explanations after the fact. Why does everybody do it? Lots of reasons. Primarily because they don't know what you now know. And the question isn't, what are they going to do? The question is, what are you going to do? So that's, our, that's the best answer I got. And it's a lot longer than I planned on going, but it's what I got. Um, ah, man, I wanted to talk about, ah, nah, we'll, we'll keep going. We've got time. Um, if you have more questions, you want to know more, understand more about the history of the Sabbath and the change and all that stuff, check the church's website. Go to our YouTube page. Uh, it's session six in this series. Right, right? There's a playlist on YouTube. There's a, a list of things on the, on the church's website. Session six will go into those details. And if you still have questions, listen, here's the thing. It's really important. I don't want anybody here at, at, this thing is over after next week, right? This last three sessions are next week. We're going to talk about that. At the end of this thing, I don't want anybody to walk out of here and go, man, I wish I understood better. That's no good. The time to ask the questions is now. Write it down on a card. Give them to your row leader. Give them to me. Give them to Jeff. We'll get you an answer. All right.